Decisions, decisions. Eight foot deck boards come to here. 10 foot deck boards come to here. The whole trailer is eight foot six wide. Eight foot would probably look more to scale, but for not that much more effort, really hardly any more effort, and not that much more money, I could have 10 foot. And that's two foot for it's like 25% more room. Probably have a table and chairs out here and maybe a swing, maybe even bunk beds from the miles away. I don't know. Whew, okay, I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna make it 10 foot wide. Um, just what we're gonna do, no turning back. So I want my decking, come on camera, just stick out two foot past my framing. And then I'm gonna have a six inch column in front of the four by four. So that puts the front of the four by four right here at 112 inches from the siding. And I dropped, I dropped plumb with my level. So this is where the first four by four corner is gonna go. And it's probably gonna hit a million roots and this stump might be in the way. I hope not. I didn't bring any kind of saw to cut roots. So yeah, I do have, I have my lopper. So let's see what happens. One of many set. It's right on line. It's just in the right spot. It's perfectly level. I put about three inches of dry concrete down there and threw some water on it just to keep it <laughs> stable until I won't mix them in the wheelbarrow until I get all four across the front done. So super stoked. Obviously it's way tall. It's a four by four ahead. I'll trim it off um, when we can establish some elevations, which I hadn't done yet. Two corner posts set. Now I can pull the string and divide by three and it comes out right freaking there, right next to that stump. I don't know if that's diggable. I'll give it a try. I can always just like change the spacing up a little bit, but I'd like for them to be equal. So we'll see. Okay, it is Sunday, a new day. I'm gonna go ahead and take these little braces off of these columns. And you'll notice there's no stakes on them, but they're still a huge help in holding the column straight enough to get some concrete in the hole. And once you get a little concrete, you can, uh, you know, dial them in with the um, four foot level. Hard to believe how soft this ground was just, I don't know, six or seven weeks ago when I tried to work it with the Traco and was almost getting stuck. But uh, some drainage, some proper drainage, and uh, five weeks with no rain. And now we got it hard as a rock. So actual time on digging this little hole, which is only like 14 inches deep, maybe 16 inches deep, was uh, six minutes. Back to the pine tree stump. Pine trees have a big, huge root, and it goes straight down into the ground. And by the time the trees get big, that root's pretty big, and it goes very, very deep. So they're hard to dig up. I was not able to dig them up with the little track hole that I have. I'd have had to dig a huge hole, and I didn't want to disturb all that dirt. So they're sticking up. Um, eventually, I'll get a stump grinder, and you know, it, it removes the visible part, but the, the tap root's still down in there. Um, so that's why the stumps are still here and they'll be here until I grind them, but the stumps will still be in the ground. I just have to work around them. been thinking a lot about elevation of the deck if I make it flush with the threshold here that's kind of nice to come out of a door and not have a step but the ceiling height by the time I get out here is going to be way low probably a little less than seven feet it's going to feel cave-like so I thought well maybe I'll come out one step and still not be so low that the deck will come right here and the sheet metal will hide that gap except where the wheel well is still gonna be low so i think i'm gonna come out down two steps normal step is seven seven and a half inches i'll come down uh i don't know 14 and a half inches i'll have to patch the sheet metal but that'll give me i think seven and a half feet headroom by the time you get out here so i think aesthetically and pleasantly i'll be maybe they'll be high enough to hang a ceiling fan yeah so 
Okay, I'm gonna get out my uh, my laser level and shoot these four corners and pull some strings and um, move forward. So I'm gonna do this kind of backwards. I'm gonna nail my joists to the little columns before I put them in the hole and finish the nailing and then put them in the hole, get them straight and then concrete. Because if I do what normal people do and concrete them all and get them straight, then I won't be able to hammer on them for the rest of the day. I'll be screwed for the rest of the day. But this way I think I can finish the structure and do the concrete also. So I'm gonna start. Okay, this one's nailed. This one's shimmed up until the uh, header or joist is level. And this one's securely clamped, so I'll have to pick it up and lay it down to nail this one. This first row is gonna be the most awkward because I can't nail from that side. And the wheels have definitely gotta come off. So uh, I'm gonna pick it up and carefully lay it down so this joint won't move and uh, take those wheels off. And nail, nail this real good. And nail the six foot piece on the end, put it back in place and try to nail from the backside. The first joist or sill is done. Two more to go. They'll be easier because I'll be able to get to both sides. I'll be able to hammer them in place rather than having to lay it down. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be super strong. And when I get these two finished, then I'll do the concrete. Well, I still got to trim the ends and put a raft. Uh, I don't know what you call it. I'm going across here to seal the ends. I'll probably do that before I do the concrete. No, then I won't be able to roll my wheelbarrow in here. I'll do that afterwards. I'm ready to nail together the second joist and it's not going to be level with the first one there's going to be some slope so i got this much on the level and it's about an inch from end to end roughly and if it was a deck it wouldn't need any slope because the water can go between the holes but eventually this will be closed in so it needs some slope so i think that's adequate i went ahead and marked the bottom on both of these which will be the top of the joist i'll move to the other end do the same thing Okay, second row is done. Um, I've been pulling strings and then clamping a little block so I don't have to try to hold these things up while hammering them. And that's working out well. And these two columns wanted to lean in a little bit so I got them propped out until we get the concrete in there. So two more stinking post holes and uh, another row of this to go. Okay, let's mix up some concrete and take care of this. We need to trim these ends and nail the board on each end. And I got to decide what to do up front with the columns. I think my old plan is not going to work. So we'll look at that.
Okay, I've learned two things about my columns. For one, I was planning on cutting these four by fours off flush with the floor like I did all the rest of them and just putting two bolts to hold the column, like one here and one there. But this is so low to the ground and that column's kind of tall. I don't think that's gonna be strong enough. So I think I'm gonna cut these off maybe here. And just let them stick up through the deck and put a bolt here and a bolt at the bottom. And two, there's no way I can determine a height and cut them at home. I'm gonna have to go from the top down. I'm gonna have to figure out what kind of sheet metal I'm gonna put on the roof and then what kind of strapping and then the rafters and then the slope and then go backwards to get the height of the column. So nothing bad, just a uh, evolution of the uh, porch here, but I did get a lot done. I do have a structure to uh, put the deck down uh, next time I come, 40, two by six by 10. So these are the other three columns in the set and they are in much better shape, but they do need a little work. This is a, this is a knot hole, look how it rotted. This is so strange because our predominant lumber in Louisiana is um, pine, yellow pine. And on a yellow pine piece of board, the knot will last longer than the board. So when the boards rot and get old, you, you see the, uh, the knots intact. And so with this redwood, it's the opposite. The knots are fading, like like here. This this was a knot, and then it was a hole. But I'll, I'll patch these up. Won't take long. One of the four columns is considerably shorter than the other ones. I don't think it'll be a problem, but I'm glad I caught that. I need to design around the shorter column. I can always cut the longer ones. Yep, interesting. There was a knot, and now there's nothing. Just a hole. I'm just gonna patch over it. Okay, day number three on the deck build. Got here a little late, it's almost 11. Um, but we're gonna try to get it decked today. And to do that, I'm gonna have to straighten out this end because it's crooked as all heck. And I knew it when I was nailing it and I just kept on nailing it and then I checked it. So how smart am I? But I'm gonna have to knock this end out about three inches. Um, we're gonna temporarily stand the columns up because I wanna cut the deck around them. And I have to decide how far underneath the teeny home to slide the boards to be able to close that up eventually. I got a trailer full. Bought new deck boards. Yep, brand new. Got my four columns here. And I got some old um, 6x6 house sills that I'm going to use for the beams on top of the post. So let's get after it. This is where it's going to look a little weird. Um, I want my deck boards to come all the way out to here, which is cantilevered out quite a bit from my last joist. I have another joist here, but I don't want to put this joist in until my columns are situated. And my columns are in the right location, but they're not cut to length, bottom or top, and I want to seal the bottom. So right now they're just clamped. So for right now, these deck boards are just kind of be hanging out in the air. When I get my columns situated, I'll add the joist under them and I'll nail the bejeebies out of them. But uh, yeah. So far, so good. This is a 
first two boards will be kind of a tricky cut because they're going to be cut around the column and then a whole bunch of them will just go on real quick and then a couple more cuts down the way so let's get to measuring and marking okay first one's cut took two tries but i got it cut and the length is perfect i'm not gonna have to cut any of the lengths i'm gonna have to cut one for this side and then pull a string and just slide the boards out to the outside of the columns nail a bunch of them and then i'll have to cut around that column so okay this is gonna be good start nailing well it's noon already but i got my first pair first pair is probably the toughest now i can just tack a board outside to outside but to put them in and get a bunch of them down real quick but i'm gonna go eat a sandwich section all nailed down wasn't too bad i'm doing every other nail because i'm afraid i'm gonna run out of nails so i know i'm gonna run out of nails but I'm ready to fit these next two pieces around the second column and I can drop my little guide board for now I won't need it till I get on the other side so super strong too I'm pretty happy with this thing I'm ready to cut around the third post and I did a quick tally and I'm gonna be short a board darn it but it doesn't really matter I'll get one next time but I wouldn't have been short a board if I wouldn't have cut the first one wrong I had um yeah, I messed it up. Anyway, we'll get some more. They got more to get in place. So measuring from the outside of my last deck board to the outside of the frame, I'm uh, I'm a half inch. The measurements are half inch less here than here, which is kind of close. But I'll start trying to make these cracks just a little bit bigger. Tighten these cracks up a little bit. It's kind of hard because every board's different. But it would be really nice if I was really parallel with that outside board when I got to the end. But a half inch, that's pretty close. So we are, we're happy right now. Okay, three hours after I started, it is done. The deck, well, <clears throat> the deck is done. It's nailed down. I got every other spot nailed. I don't know if I need to nail them all or not. Look how many nails I had left. Like none, zero. Mike could find one on the ground maybe, but maybe not. Now I took the board that I boogered up on my first cut and I used it for the last board because I wanted to get finished and nobody's ever going to see it. But other than that, it's almost perfect. So time to address these columns and get them trimmed and cut and ready to go down. I don't have anything to seal the bottoms of them yet or with me, so I'm not going to put them down, but I'm going to get them ready. I'm doing some ciphering on my rafters. Assuming... The rafter will come right underneath that low sheet metal and I'll just slide the new sheet metal under it. I'll get the same cross section of metal. And this looks like a pretty good slope. I don't have a clue what it is. I just kind of put it up there and clamped it. So assuming this is replaced with a two by six, but at the end I cut it down to three and a half inches. I make like a bird's mouth. And assuming on top of my posts, I put those old timbers and they're five and three quarters that means the top of my pink post needs to be 82 inches above the deck. So if I get them all 82 inches above the deck, I'll be good. Now, the, the bottom half is not the same right now because they're all at different elevations. And this one right here is my shortest one. So I'm going to make this one look okay. I probably cut six or eight inches off the top and four or five inches off the bottom. I got to do some math and then i will get them all the same off the bottom down to the bottom of the chamfer and cut the rest off the top so they all match well there's only four of them but we'll get them all the same and i'll cut these four by fours down to the right length and that's going to be determined by sitting in a chair and looking out and i don't want it to obstruct my vision so i'm gonna go get a chair and sit down and look so column number one i cut four inches off the bottom that was somewhat arbitrary Stood it back up, measured 82 inches from the deck to the top. It's not arbitrary, and I cut it, and I put it in place. And now, from here to here, I have 13 and a half inches. So I'm going to have to cut 8 inches off the bottom of this one to get this down 13 and a half inches. And I'll stand it up again, and I'll mark 82, and I'll cut the top. And I'll do the other ones, and they all ought to be the same. They ought to be. And I'm cutting all the four by fours down to 30 inches tall because I can sit in my chair and see over that and see it into my pretty woods. So they'll all get cut when I take the post down. 
And I finally got my ladder out of my shop and brought it back. Um, could have brought it earlier. I just never had room in the truck. It looks good with a new floor. So one step forward. So big day today. The deck is down. Um, I still got a little trim on the front edge. I still got to bolt the columns. I still got to close this in. Actually, I'm closing the whole thing in eventually. But probably not this winter. This winter, we'll just try to get a roof on it. Got all the posts cut the same height. They all look pretty good. And uh, this is super. This is probably a good time to end this video. And uh, we'll do the, the rafters and the sheeting on the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.